Hello everyone and welcome back to another true crime episode. Today we're delving into the shocking case of William Pounds, a pastor whose double life led to the tragic murder of his fiancée. Please like and subscribe to our channel as we bring you real life stories every week. William Pounds was the pastor of King's Chapel Memorial CME Church in Perry, Georgia. But beneath his religious facade, Pounds led a deceptive double life that would ultimately lead to tragedy. For over a decade, Pounds juggled relationships with two women, Kendra Jackson and Vicinda Crawford. He repeatedly convinced each woman that he had left the other, even becoming engaged to both at various times. The facade began to crumble on May 31st, 2015. It was Pastor Appreciation Day at Pastor Pound's church, and both women showed up to surprise him. This unexpected encounter exposed Pound's deceit to both of his girlfriends. Less than two weeks later, on June 12, 2015, the day before Pastor Pound's was set to marry Vicinda Crawford, tragedy struck. Kendra Jackson was found dead from a gunshot wound inside Pastor Pound's bedroom. Pound's claimed that Kendra Jackson had committed suicide after learning of his plans to marry Miss Crawford. He told investigators that she had grabbed his .40 caliber pistol from his bedroom dresser and shot herself in the head. However, the evidence told a different story. Crime scene reconstruction and blood pattern analysis showed no evidence that Jackson had the gun in her hand when she was shot. Forensic experts testified that Jackson had been left face down for at least 10 minutes before being moved, contradicting Pound's claim of immediately calling for help. Two bullets had been fired, one into Pound's bed and another into Jackson's head. There were signs that the crime scene had been staged, including a comforter spread across the bed with multiple holes in it. During the trial, prosecutors highlighted numerous inconsistencies in Pound's statements. A firefighter testified that Pounds initially claimed he wasn't in the room when Jackson was shot. Prosecutor Jason Martin presented damning evidence, including text messages between Jackson and Crawford where Jackson wrote, what happens in the darkness always comes to light, referring to Pound's deceit. After more than three hours of deliberation, the jury found William Pounds guilty of malice murder, felony murder, and aggravated assault. Judge Howard Sims did not mince words during sentencing. Pounds was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. Pastor Pounds then appealed his sentence all the way to the Georgia Supreme Court. In 2024, the Georgia Supreme Court reviewed the case and upheld Pounds' conviction. The court ruled that the evidence presented at trial was sufficient to support the conviction for malice murder. This case serves as a stark reminder that appearances can be deceiving and that the truth no matter how deeply buried, will eventually come to light. Stay tuned for commentary by DJ. Hey everyone, DJ here. And this case reminds me of some past comments that I saw in some of my old videos where women were saying that because women are being killed by so many evil men, if they're gonna get into a relationship, it's gonna be by a man of God, a man who's in the church. And I'm here to tell you that there's no difference between a man who claims to be in the church and a man who's not in the church. Whether he's an atheist or a man who claims to believe in God, there's no real way to know unless you do your due diligence. Don't assume that because someone is in church or because someone is a pastor or someone is a priest, that doesn't mean anything. There are a lot of people that's using the church and the Bible to hide who they are. Just imagine Pastor Pounds was claiming to be a good man, a man of the Lord, yet he was dating two different women over the course of 10 years. And I can tell you this, Pastor Pounds was not just dating these two women. I guarantee you he was dating other women or he was trying to date other women. And that's a big problem I see with people in the church. I can't tell the difference between someone who's in the church and someone who's not in the church. And Pastor Pounds is a perfect example. Imagine he was engaged at the same time to these two women, Kendra Jackson and Miss Crawford. And he was playing them from day one, being a womanizer, while at the same time, He's in church every Sunday preaching to people and mentoring people. Do you see the contradictions here? That's why you should never believe someone who says, I'm a good person or I'm a pastor. You have to do some investigation to see who this person really is. Don't make assumptions about people by the cloak that they wear. Because there are a lot of wolves in sheep clothing. Don't look at somebody because they're handsome, they're tall, you, you assume that they're good. Don't think because somebody is preaching, that's a good man. So Pastor Pounds could have just broke up with either one of these women and marry the other. But he decided instead it would have been a good idea to kill Miss Jackson. And he did that the night before he was supposed to marry Miss Crawford. Let me tell you something about criminals. They think that they can outsmart detectives. 
Detectives study criminal behavior and they've seen many people like Pastor Pounks, people who tried to deceive the public and deceive the cops into believing that they didn't commit a crime. But today, detectives have a lot of tools at their disposal. This is not 1980, this is 2024. And the tools that they have could easily determine what really happened in a murder case. Pastor Pound stated that Ms. Jackson grabbed his gun and shot herself in the head because she found out he was about to marry Ms. Crawford the next day. But when they look at the evidence, they realize that there were two gunshots, one into the mattress and one into Ms. Jackson's head. Why would Miss Jackson shoot a bullet in the mattress and then shoot herself in the head? Nobody that's trying to commit suicide is going to do that. On top of that, they found that the hole in the mattress was covered by a comforter. Who's going to shoot a hole in the mattress, shoot themselves in the head, and then cover up the hole in the mattress? The only person that's going to do that is the murderer. And it definitely wasn't Miss Jackson. It was Pastor Pounds trying to cover up the crime. He thought by doing that, he would have fooled detectives into thinking Miss Jackson committed suicide. And if you listen to his 911 call, he's pretending to cry and pretending to do CPR. Now, Pastor Pounds was actually in the National Guard and they said he was an expert on CPR because he actually taught people to do CPR. So they're saying that Pastor Pounds would have known Miss Jackson was dead, yet he was on the 911 call pretending to do CPR on a dead person and he muted his phone a couple times while he was on the call with the 911 operator. Pastor Punks have been deceiving people his whole life and he thought that he could deceive the 911 operator, the cops and the detectives. But it was very easy to see through the lies and deceit of Pastor Punks. Miss Jackson and Miss Crawford actually found out about each other after being played by Pastor Punks for around 10 years. And when they found out about each other, neither of them actually left Pastor Pounds. He still lied to them and told them he's going to leave the other one and they both stayed in a relationship with him. What I don't understand is that why would women stay with a man like that? Why would you be with a man who claims to be a man of the cloth, a man with integrity, a man who believed in the Bible and should be following it? Why would you be in a relationship with a man like that while having sex with him and not being married to him? Do people know that if you're claiming that you're a Christian, being engaged to someone and having sex with them, it's still a sin. You have to be married first in order to have sex with someone for it to be good in the eyes of the Lord. If you meet someone and they're telling you they're a Christian, if that person then asks you to engage in sexual activity, you should run because that person is not a person of God. That person is not a Christian. And a pastor specifically shouldn't be engaged in sexual activity before he's married. And people wonder why there's less and less people going to church. And this is one of the reasons why. Pastor Pounds is one of the reasons why. And you might say Pastor Pounds is just one person. Well, let me tell you something. Pastor Pounds is not just one person. There are thousands of people in the church. Thousands and thousands of people that's behaving the way Pastor Pounds is behaving. Pastor Pounds is in church looking at women and trying to figure out how he could have sex with them. That's what he's been doing. So he thinks that the words in the Bible doesn't apply to him. Do you know that there were approximately 3,000 priests who were accused of sexual misconduct dating back 50 years? And this sexual misconduct was done to minors. There's some people in society that we should be able to trust. We're talking about people in law enforcement, politicians, and definitely leaders of the church. We don't expect pastors to be accused of molesting and raping kids. We don't expect a guy like Pastor Pounds should be accused of murder. We don't expect these people to do things like this. Yet, here we are. Do you remember Jesse Jackson? Jesse Jackson was a reverend, he probably still a reverend, and he has been a reverend for many years. And when Bill Clinton had the Monica Lewinsky scandal, Jesse Jackson was called to advise Bill Clinton. So he was mentoring Bill Clinton when Bill Clinton was accused of having sexual relations with an intern while he was president. At the same time Jesse Jackson was mentoring Bill Clinton, he had a child out of wedlock with a woman who was not his wife. And the only way we found that out is because the press was about to release that information. And when the press was about to release the information, Jesse Jackson decided to come clean and say what he did. And he was asking for forgiveness. And everybody was coming out saying we should forgive him, he made a mistake. Let me tell you something. A mistake is not something that you do daily. When you do sin daily, that's not a mistake. 
If you do something once, that could be considered a mistake. If you do something repeatedly, it's not a mistake. That's intentional. So Jesse Jackson having a child out of wedlock with a woman who was not his wife, that was not a mistake. He had an ongoing relationship with this woman for an extended period of time while he was still married and pretending to be a reverend. How are people going to take people in the church seriously when they defend people like Jesse Jackson? When they defend people like Pastor Pounds? When they defend the 3,000 priests who were abusing children? And someone asked me, they said, DJ, you're a good man and you're living your life the right way. Why are you not in the church? And I told them, how could I be in the church when we have people like Pastor Pounds committing crimes and lying to his congregation? How am I supposed to believe people like that? And if you say Pastor Pounds is just one man, I'm telling you that there are a lot of Pastor Pounds in the church. How am I going to put my trust into somebody like that? How am I going to allow someone like that to mentor me? If you believe in the Bible and you want to follow the laws of the Bible, you can read. Read the Bible yourself. You don't need people like Pastor Pounds to tell you what's in the Bible. Because too many of them committing crimes, committing sexual abuse, murder. How are you going to know which pastor is a good pastor? Everybody thought Pastor Pounds was a great man. Nobody knew what he was doing behind closed doors. Nobody knew he was a charlatan. I don't know why Miss Jackson fell for the lies of Pastor Pounds. I don't know why Miss Crawford fell for the lies of Pastor Pounds. And I guarantee you one of the reasons why is because he was a pastor. But once he lied to them the first or the second time, they should have left. If someone lied to you once, you could probably put it aside. If somebody lied to you twice, then you know that person is never going to be honest with you. Especially if that person is a pastor of a church. He shouldn't have no reason to be lying and deceiving people. So pastor Pounce shot Miss Jackson and then claimed she committed suicide. But the evidence showed that she was held down and shot. The evidence showed that she did not have a gun in her hand. And these things are easy to find out. Gunshot residue is something detectives could test for. If someone has shot a gun, they're definitely going to have gunshot residue on their hands unless they wash their hands. But if this lady committed suicide, there's no time to wash her hands, right? So she should definitely have gunshot residue on her hands. She had none. The sad part about this whole case is that Pastor Pounds had a way out. Pastor Pounds could have just broken up with one of the women. That's it. He could have told one of them, hey, I can't be with you. And move on with his life with one woman, get married to her, turn his life around and live a good life. Why he decided murder was the way to go? The only thing I could surmise is that the woman threatened to expose him. That's the only thing I could think about of why he would resort to murder. Because if she had threatened to say, hey, if you're not going to be with me and if you're going to marry this other woman, then I'm going to tell the whole church what you've been doing. And if he's thinking about losing his ability to be a pastor, which is also his ability to make money, then that could be a motive for him wanting to kill Miss Jackson. I'm trying to figure out why would he think, okay, let me kill this woman. I don't understand why he would want to kill her. But she definitely didn't commit suicide. That I know. The evidence shows. That's why you should never believe what anyone says. Look for the evidence. And the evidence is going to tell you exactly what happened. People are going to lie through their teeth just to escape accountability. If you go to prison right now and you speak to 5,000 inmates, 90 something percent of them is going to tell you that they're innocent. Or they're going to tell you some version of the story to make themselves look less culpable. There's very few criminals in the world who are honest. So Pastor Pounds murdered Miss Jackson, staged the scene, hid evidence, and tried to get away with murder. I'm happy that it didn't work. I want to thank the detectives for solving this case, for seeing right through Mr. Pounds. Then with all this evidence, he got convicted. And he has the nerve to go and appeal the case. And obviously he lost the appeal because the evidence is just too much to overcome. Pastor Pounds is going to be in jail for the rest of his life. I hope his days are going to be very miserable. He can go in jail and preach to the prisoners. But I don't think any of them are going to believe him after they listen to this case. Pastor Pounds was a serial liar. He was a serial manipulator. And he was not a good man. I hope he rots in jail. If you're somebody that's attending a church, do not put all your faith in the pastor. Because I guarantee you that you do not know the pastor as good as you think you know him. And I'm not saying all pastors are bad. All I'm saying is that don't put all your faith in a pastor or any man on this earth. Take everything with a grain of salt. And don't put anyone on a pedestal, especially someone you don't even know. And last thing I want to say is this. Do not defend bad people. A lot of people was defending Reverend Jackson when he cheated on his wife and had a baby out of wedlock. And I guarantee you, 
there were people who were defending Pastor Pounce, saying he was a good man. That's why I don't believe what people say. I look at what people do. And what Pastor Pounce was doing was not right. And this lady, Miss Jackson, lost her life because of Pastor Pounce. There's so many scriptures in the Bible that Pastor Pounce could have gone to to know that murdering somebody was a bad thing. But I don't think Pastor Pounce believed in the Bible, else he would have never committed murder. Thank you everyone for watching. Let me know what you think about this case in the comments. And I'll see you guys in the next one.